Hi, I'm Scott Hegarty, and I'm going to be showing you some macroeconomic topics that can help you review for a higher level macro class or maybe supplement what you're doing in your own principles of microeconomics or macroeconomics course. So what I've prepared is some videos that lay out some of the more graphical descriptions of some of the ideas so you can look at the math or look at the graphs and that will help you in the courses you're taking. So what I've laid out first is sort of an introduction is, is a look at the micro topics that we're going to see on video. So. What we're going to look at is cost-benefit decision, which basically shows how diminishing returns due to scarcity lead to rising costs and falling benefits for any activity. And when costs start to exceed benefits, the activity is no longer worth doing. Or if costs are less than benefits or benefits are higher than costs, you need to do more of that activity. What that leads to is the optimal quantity or the best amount of something where costs and benefits are equal. So that can be graphed and we'll lay out that graph. We'll also talk about the production function, which is a relationship between inputs and outputs, usually labor inputs with fixed capital and scarce land, meaning that there's diminishing returns to labor as you add more production rises but at a decreasing rate. So that gives a special curve shape to it, also shows how you can lay out falling benefits due to increased labor and you can turn that into rising costs, which shows the math behind the cost benefit decision. That can be done or used to create what's called the Production Possibilities Frontier, or PPF. That's basically a two good graph, two products, one on the x-axis and one on the y-axis, that shows how trade-offs are made. Making one product versus another means moving resources into the other product. That entails a cost while you're earning the benefit of the new production and the new good. So this shows the limits of production given resources as well as the effects of scarcity. It also shows a cost-benefit ratio as a, a line, a tangent line on that curve. And so it shows how costs and benefits change as you change your mix of products due to that allocation of resources. And then I go into supply and demand, the market mechanism. I show the law of supply, the law of demand, equilibrium, and how that leads to an optimal quantity, how price and quantity are determined in the marketplace, and how shifts in supply and demand can lead to changes in price and quantity. So we learn about the production decision, the consumer decision, those two separate laws, how the markets reach equilibrium through market forces, and then finally how that can change due to changes in supply, changes in demand, and what causes that. Now we can also talk about interventions in the market, price ceilings and price floors where the price is artificially set, which leads to an inefficient outcome and maybe too much of a product or too little of a product, a surplus or a shortage. And then we can also talk about market failures. We'll, we'll talk about how not every time the market does not always work perfectly. So there are some instances such as a breakdown of information or a breakdown of competition that lead to these market failures, that the market does not allocate resources on its own. We can graph out the effect of what's called an externality where the costs and benefits fall on an outside party. So we'll lay out all these micro topics and these are generally done in both the principles of micro and the principles of macro class, but you can use these to understand the role of government intervention in the economy, the role of markets in allocating resources, and that's generally a really good understanding, a really good foundation for understanding what leads to what leads to increases or decreases in prices that has a macro application. We can use prices such as interest rates and exchange rates, but we can also talk about large, like sort of a larger picture when the government has a role in the economy versus when markets should take over. And that affects macro policy as well, especially when some people de debate less intervention and some people debate more intervention. All these ideas both drive macroeconomic markets as well as the larger discussion of, of the government's role in society. So we'll lay out these videos and then we'll also talk about how they apply as they come up in terms of money markets, other markets, as we talk about macroeconomics.